Seaway's new album is finally here, and just like the album title says, this album is one big vibe. I've been a fan of the band since their first album, and throughout their entire career, the band has been able to mix pop and punk perfectly. Songs like Shy Guys, Best Mistakes, and London are all pop punk perfection. CUA came up in the pop punk revival of the 2010s and are still active and still have a lot of fans. And it just goes to show the band's longevity. A lot of bands during that time didn't make it to two albums, let alone four. One thing I do want to touch base on is I've seen a lot of talk online about maybe Seaway changing their sound on this record. That doesn't sound like their old pop punk albums and I want to put an end to that right now. Big Vibe is a pop punk album. I don't know how you could think that it isn't based on the singles that the band has already released. I mean, it's an emphasis on pop for sure, but we're not going to pretend that other bands in the scene haven't utilized the more pop aspect of pop punk. Are we? Hit the Lights, Every Avenue, uh, Neck Deep, Forever the Sickest Kids, All Time Low. I mean, I could literally go on. Big Vibe is a pop punk album. And credit where credit is due, CUA came up in the pop punk revival of the 2010s like I said earlier, and when that scene started to morph into a more emo shoegaze kind of a sound, CUA didn't change their sound and they kept what fans enjoyed. And that's not to say this is some cookie cutter album, the band goes for a more pop 80s inspired uh, vibe. I walked right into that one. Uh, the other big change here is that there's no more dual vocals and Ryan Locke is the only singer we hear on the album. Speaking to the bore, Ryan detailed the band's sound on Big Vibe. We wanted to make a really sweet pop rock record with lots of different sounds, lots of different influences. Growing up, all our favorite records were very dynamic records. A lot of Jimmy E. World, a lot of Weezer records. They're dynamic in that the songs all sound quite different, and we've always tried to achieve that on past releases. But this one specifically. We just went, okay, that'll be the heavy song, that'll be the softer song, that'll be the punk rock song, etc. Every single vibe or feeling we could think of, we would try and mold the song to. The band absolutely nailed that sweet pop rock sound. The album sounds like summer. It sounds like the soundtrack to A Day at the Beach or skateboarding around the city during summer. The album was supposed to be released during the summer but was delayed due to coronavirus and the band spoke to the bore about listening to the album during these hard times. It's a fun record, there's a lot going on there, a lot to sink your teeth into. I don't think you just listen to it and that's it. At the very least, I hope that people can enjoy the record and maybe escape from the uncertainty of the world. Getting right into the album, the title track, Big Vibe, is the band's best song. That was clear ever since that song was first released and I heard it for the first time. It's immediately infectious, super catchy, has a modern song title. That entire song is just one big vibe. Other songs nail the summer vibe that the album is trying to present. Songs like Still Blue. I mean, that chorus on Still Blue is just wonderful. Sweet Sugar, Preach, those are all pop punk perfection. Pathetic is the song that's most reminiscent of the band's older material, and on Wicked, the band goes for a more intense sound, and it's the biggest departure from that summer vibe that the album goes for, and I think that one's going to be really interesting to see uh, if fans are divided on that song, because again, it's the song that sounds the most different from what the album is trying to present. I also like that the band didn't fall into the cliche of the pop rock and pop punk scene where an album needs an acoustic song. Now don't get me wrong, I love me an acoustic song, but it, sometimes it almost seems like bands are sitting around, the track list is done, and they're like, oh, we need an acoustic song, it just has to be there somewhere tucked later into the album, and Seaway doesn't fall into that cliche. There's no song on big vibe that sounds like it doesn't belong. Mrs. Davis was added to the album very late in the process and adding that song might be the best decision the band made regarding Big Vibe. Besides the singles, it's one of the best songs on the album. That big chorus, that opening riff, I think Mrs. Davis is going to be a fan favorite. Seaway has never taken themselves too seriously, so when they write a pop song, it just works. They don't take themselves too seriously, like I said, like many, many other bands in the scene uh, do. So they can have some fun with the sound, some fun with the lyrics, and it just works. And it also helps that Seaway write great songs, very memorable songs about wanting to run away with your lover or late night dates and all these late night adventures. Seaway nail the pop punk vibe perfectly. This is the band's best album, and I think most people will agree with that once they hear it. I also think with the more pop sound that the band is going to attract a lot of new fans. Now I can't wait to dance to Still Blue, Mrs. Davis, and Big Vibe at a show, but until then I'm going to be playing this album on repeat because this album is one big vibe. 
What do you think about the brand new album from Seaway Big Vibe? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks to Pure Noise for sending over the album. Please like and share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Tell all your friends. Follow me on Twitter. And thanks for watching.